Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet this evening. Welcome again at this Wednesday evening, time of praise and worship. And tonight is a very special night. It is a special time of prayer. Those of you who are watching over the internet, please do join with us in the live prayer that we are going to have. Also, please share this with your friends and share this with your loved ones. And those of you who are here with us this evening, welcome again in the sanctuary. Father, we bless your name, O God, as we come again before the throne of grace, O God. We come with things giving in our hearts, O Father, especially, O God, at this special time of prayer, Father, as a corporate body, O God, with those that are online and those that are in the house with us. We are going to be lifting our voices unto you, O God, for, Father, you are worthy, O God. You have told us, O God, to call all upon you, O Father God, in our times of need, O Father, and you are our Jehovah Jireh, Jireh O God, and you provide everything, O God, for our well-being. So this evening, Father, we come before the throne of grace, O Father God, with an expectant heart, O God, for you say, ask and it shall be given unto you. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you, O Father God. Seek and you shall find. Father, we've come seeking. We've come asking of God. And we've come knocking on your door this evening, Father, for the needs of our nation, for our own personal needs, O oh God, and the needs of your people, Father. We bless your name, O oh God, and we thank you, Nightings, Father, for you are a prayer in serving God. Receive the highest blessing, the highest praises from your people through Christ our Lord. And God's people say, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are here to worship the Lord, to lift up our prayers, to thank him, to praise him. Hallelujah. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship.
worship and adore you. Praise God. Welcome, everybody. Just just have a word of prayer. Father, be with us in this time of prayer. We're seeking your holy presence, even, O God, as people in person and those that are online could together join their voices in praying for needs and desperate situation. We come, O God, recognizing this is the hour and the call to prayer, and we know that we live in the most challenging of times. We ask your grace. We ask you, Holy Spirit, all oh, infuse us with your power. Ignite us with the prayer of intercession, seeking the, the very best for our city and our nation and around the world. Be with each one of us today, we pray, and minister to us in Jesus' name. God's people said, amen and amen. Give the Lord a clap offering. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. You may be seated. This is a little different format. I just want to explain to you. Uh, and if you see some changes today, it's because uh, it was last moment, the, the singers and the hymns and all of this is last moment practice, so just bear with us. It's something that uh, we've not done before, but this is, as I said, lifting our prayers in one accord, and I want to say this, whether you are in person or online, you could be with us. Now, considering all that's happening, we are actually limiting what would be an access that everybody would have in terms of mic because we would have usually what the policy is to bring uh, give one mic to one person whether singers or not and for this occasion to call many sing uh, w uh, prayer warriors would be impossible but you every one of us are participant in this prayer I call this lifting up our voice, lifting up our prayers in one accord. So let me read a couple of passages, and then the singers are coming back, and we would sing that old time. So the entire thing is to do this evening is uh, participation rather than be an audience. So the songs that I have intentionally asked Pastor Valerie is to sing those old-time hymns so everybody would know. And those of you who are watching, please remember this is a great opportune moment that you could avail. I'm going to read a couple of passages that we're going to come back, and then we'll begin the various subjects in prayer. First, I would want us to come to this place in Acts chapter 1, verse 4, and just before his ascension, the Lord Jesus Christ said, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait. And this is very important for us in this matter of waiting in prayer. It's not only patience with one another, but just wait. This is very important. And for us, it's just going to be uh, in an hour, but for the disciples, it was 10 long days. So wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard. Now in Acts chapter 1 and going down to verse 14, these all continued in one accord in prayer. Think about this. For 10 days, they had so many subjects to pray for. 
How did they manage? But we find here they were in one accord. Of course, we cannot agree with every minor details of our life and our aspects of ideology or culture, but there is something that we can agree the things that are major in the scriptures. So I want you to understand, it doesn't matter whether you're Protestants or Pentecostals or Maronites or whether you are from Lebanon or the Middle East or Africa, whether you're a Coptic Christian from Egypt or whether you are uh, Orthodox or whether you are a brethren, no matter what you are, if you can come together, and we all can, in one accord, there are many things we could disagree on, but the way of government of the church or the various way in which the services are done, but there's one thing we know. We go to Abba Father in prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and come in the, Holy, the power of the Holy Spirit, and we are called to be intercessors. We're called to bring prayers to the Father, and as priests unto God, all of us as believers believe that, we not only come as priests to praise God, but also bring the needs of people to God and then bring back the word from God to the people and to bring grace and peace and blessing. So all these continued with one accord and in prayer, Acts chapter 1, verse 14, and supplication with the women, together with the women, and Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ and his brothers. So together simply means in one mind, in that oneness. That's what we're going to do in just a moment. So it says here in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Of course, uh, COVID has necessitated us not being in one place, and yet the opportunity that you could be from all over the world. So precious people, those who are online, share this. If you can, call up your friends, whether you YouTube, and tell them this is a participating prayer, which I'm calling on everyone. It's very important. There are very many subjects, and you have an opportunity to be able to join in prayer and bring those needs uh, as the Lord would enable us in this short time. Now, I want you to know in Acts chapter 4 and verse 24 and verse 25. Acts chapter 4, verse 24. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God in one accord and said, O Lord, thou art God, thou hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all therein. So here is a prayer that goes, goes all the way to verse 30, and what is so important, they joined together, lifted up their voice in one accord. What we're going to do is, though we are many people from many nations, from many backgrounds, right here uh, in person, as well as many of you for watching all over the world, we're coming and lifting up our voice in one accord. And this would be played long after what we had on our Wednesday service. You could be watching on Thursday. You could be watching on Friday, the marvel of technology. And yet you could join with us as we come together in the name of the Lord Jesus. So I want you to lift up needs. And as we come together, I will give you the subject. We come in one accord and lift up those uh, things in prayer. One of the things we find, uh, two things I find in this, is we're able to literally take one subject at a time rather than traveling and cross, crisscrossing all over and praying for Russia and Ukraine and then every other thing, uh, just mishmash. What we're doing is we're going to take one subject and we can cover every subject at one time. So we are definite in this goal at one time, one accord, one voice we're going to lift up to God. So let me read this again. And when they heard, they lifted up their voice to God in one accord and said, O oh Lord God. And that's how they prayed. They lifted up their voice in one accord. I want you to understand there's a very important, powerful principle that we find the Lord Jesus Christ speaking to us from Matthew chapter 18, verse 18 and 19. It says, if two of you agree together as touching anything, and the two bind together, it shall be bound in heaven. Two loose together, we will find it loosed here on earth uh, as well. That what we agree is agreed in heaven, and what we bind is bound in heaven. That's what we're calling, that we be agreed together for some very important subject. And I want us to keep in mind that this is very important, and this is a moment that we would basically go into 
prayer, but let's just once again sing one of those old hymns, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And this is something that congregation, you could join, and those of you who are watching could join, and uh, you could actually look in the back and see this being displayed. So as the choir is coming to sing that song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, uh, we're coming together. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to sit down, you can sit down. And during the prayer, let me just say, you want to walk around, that's fine. Here, those who are in person, you want to kneel down, you want to frost it, it's just fine. But one thing is important, we pray and we lift up our voice in one accord. What a friend we have in Jesus. Can we find a friend so faithful? You cannot find someone who's taken closer than a brother. And we can come to the Father in the name of Yeshua and say, Lord, hear our prayer this evening. Let me again say the format. This is a prayer. And usually we bring people and they pray, but because of the situation, we won't be able to give mics to everybody and, and we cannot at this moment invite everyone. But what we're doing is something very important. Now, let me say this is a format that is, you can sit, you can sit, you can stand, you can walk, you can do whatever those here. And if you're at home and wherever you are except in the car, just know that this is an opportunity that you could join with us in prayer. What we're doing is taking from Acts chapter 1, verse 14, they all come together, and again in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, in one accord, Acts chapter 4 and verse 24, they lifted up their voice in one accord. Can we lift up our voice in one accord? Yeah, let's see if we can try it. Can you say together, Jesus is Lord? Jesus is Lord. There, we did that. Can you say again, Jesus is Lord? Jesus is Lord. 
Well, let's say, praise be to God. Praise be to God. So we did. We were able to come together and lift up our voice in one accord. Now what we're going to do is going to do this in prayer. The first subject that we have this evening is regarding the church. We will be talking about the youth. We will be talking about various many things. But the number one I want you to understand, as I read reports from across the world, there are many places where the church has not yet opened. Not only that, in other places, because of a heavy hostility against the people of God, they have restricted aid or restricted things that come mainly from the West uh, to the Christians. And that is so sad. Here in the West, we basically, without partiality, give. But in many places, churches are having a very difficult time. They don't give permission to build churches. They have a very difficult time. But here in the West, too, just after COVID, a lot of uh, uh, post-COVID, even though we're still in this time of COVID, a lot of churches are going through a very difficult problem. They're going through a situation where they don't have the fund to be able to keep the buildings in repair. They're on not, not having the funds to be able to uh, take the need, uh, the care of the pastors or the staff, and there's a lot of problems. So I want you to understand not just we belong to this local body in here in Jamaica, New York, and that is the Highland Church, but if you're watching, you may represent the church and you haven't been there, but I want to, you to know that you can support your church in prayer and support them with your financial support. you saying that I wish I could know. You make it possible because there's never been a time like this time that churches need all the help they can get. They need able-bodied people. They need people to be there to help. They need people to volunteer. So I'm going to ask you, first and foremost, let's lift up prayers for the church. And when I talk about the church, we're talking about the local church that comprise and part of the universal church. So we're from so many different backgrounds, so many different type of churches. But even as we pray for the churches, I want you to lift up your voice. Go ahead. Go ahead. How would you pray for a church? How would you lift up? Go ahead and lift up your voice. God is putting a burden in your heart. May the church right here in Jamaica, church in New York, church in the city, church across the United States or across the world. Now let's join together in lifting up to God, praying for the churches. Lord, hear our voice, Lord, even as we lift up our voice. Go ahead, people, and those precious ones, lift up your voice and pray for the church. Lord, help your people. You are the builder of the church. You said that you will build the church and the gates of Hades will not prevail. And Lord, we just pray that you will build the church and the gates of Hades or even, oh God, this uh, virus would not hurt your church, but the church would rise in the power of your Holy Spirit. We lift up the church. Go ahead, people of God, lift up the church today. Lift up churches across. Go ahead and just give the Lord a glory and, and honor because he's able to do great and mighty. And here, our Father, we bring the church before you. And Father God, we just cry out for the pastors and cry out for the leaders. We pray, oh God, for the many places that have been in disrepair, even as Nehemiah and even as Ezra and even as, oh God, these precious ones join together in building up, help us to rebuild churches across. And, and precious people, you are watching, and there is a need of you in the church where you go to go ahead and lift up those needs, lift up the precious people of God. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Hear our prayer this evening, and we lift all these uh, situations to you today. Go ahead, lift up, the, lift up, go ahead, lift up your voice in prayer, lift up your voice in prayer. Go ahead, precious, thank you, Lord. You're hearing our prayer even as we lift up needs and lift up situation to you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. God's people said, amen. amen. Number two on our list, we want to pray, as I mentioned about, we have such an opportunity and freedom in the United States and many parts of the West, but it's slowly changing. And I want you to understand, this has been a land of liberty, at least, because uh, the, the Lord Jesus said, you shall know the truth and truth shall set you free. Not that this nation has the total truth, but with what they heard from the Bible, they were able, and there's a sense of liberty and all of this. But let's just pray for the many, many nations that prohibit 
the propagation of the gospel, uh, limit the Christians, even of their own people, and so many places. I wanted to pray especially for Christians in Pakistan because many of the very rich people use the poorer people, particularly Christians, in uh, terrible work and take advantage of their young girls and women, and I'm not saying all of that, but it is so c common, and particularly for the blasphemy laws that is literally being used to quench and to kill Christians. Go ahead and pray for the many places all over Africa, Nigeria. There are places that are, Christians are being persecuted, including Burma right now, India, and many parts of Africa. And I want you to lift up these nations and go ahead and lift up people of God that are being hurt. Go ahead and pray. God, hear our prayer even as we pray for the persecuted people, oh God, people who are facing hostility. And we pray for them today, and we ask, oh God, that you reach out. Go ahead. Father, we lift up these precious ones and the persecuted saints before you, God. Hear our prayer this evening. And we pray for the nations, oh God, they change and not be so hostile, but they would be favorable because, Lord, your people are gracious and kind, and we lift them up to you today. And for the nations that are many represented in those windows where literally limit the Christians. We pray for your grace, for your mercy, and, Father, that you touch leaders, including including our own, and pray, O oh God, for liberty, not only for Christians, but for all religion and faith and people of all color. We're praying, O oh God, for liberty and true sense, O oh God, of grace and mercy. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hear our prayer even as we come in this time of prayer to you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. How many know that old song, Sweet Hour of Prayer? Isn't that a great song? We're going to sing that old-time hymn, and if you want to sit or you want to stand, or those watching, if you know, and if you have a hymnal, please join in this awesome prayer. Sweet Hour, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Oh, this goes all the way for hundreds of years in the United States. This has been sung down through the time particularly in difficult times and before they go to prayer. So we want to use the same to quicken our hearts in this sweet time, this precious time in prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, in song.
they gathered in the upper room and they cried out to God in one voice even as they faced persecution in Acts chapter 4 and verse 24 with one voice they cried out to God and Acts chapter 2 tells us in one accord and verse 2 suddenly the outpouring of the Holy Spirit my friends this is something that we need to confess our own failures not giving the Holy Spirit his rightful place no one nor anything can take the place of the Holy Spirit Jesus our Lord did not leave the church orphans I've been talking about what is going to happen a great outpouring in moments of grace darkness and Isaiah talks about it darkness gross darkness and yet Isaiah begins by saying arise and shine for the glory of the Lord is come upon you gross darkness but light glory every revival has proceeded by seeking God in prayer this won't be an all night but we would be having this is just to whet our appetites just to whet our tongue and appetizer to say of things that we could do in hours of prayer it is not boring I want you to know as we join together in one accord what a mighty outpouring and those 120 frightened disciples frightened of their own shadows frightened of anybody else and everybody else and yet when the Holy Spirit came they were never the same we need the Holy Spirit we need the person of the Holy Spirit and all that he has for us whether it be gifts or offices or whether it be fruits whatever he has that is the father's promise to the disciples to the church today I want you to realize what it says is in uh, Acts chapter 8 verse 8 what a mighty revival in the midst of all this one insignificant person not those big guns from the church in Jerusalem someone who's waiting on the table even Philip the Holy Spirit calls him and he steps out and Acts chapter 8 verse 8 and there was great joy in the city of Samaria God can do it again here in our city in your city I do believe with all that God is talking about the latter and the former rain the two together I do believe with all the prophets have been talking about and God is doing, going to do a quick work how else can people around hear the word not by fiery preaching or all that takes place here on a pulpit or any other pulpit we cannot move people my friend we'll be speaking to the choir speaking to the church and simply getting them edified but what will it take to reach out to our Jerusalem to our Judea to our Samaria and to the uttermost part of the world the Holy Spirit you shall receive power after that you be my witnesses I know what our Jerusalem is it's right here I know what our Samaria is the surroundings the five boroughs I know what our state is and our nation is and I know what the uttermost part of the world but imagine with me beginning in our Jerusalem moving to Judea moving to Samaria moving to the uttermost part of the world you must be talking rubbish you saying it happened in Acts chapter 2 120 they ran out from Jerusalem with the power of the Holy Spirit and wherever they went to the rest of the world the gospel was preached how did they do it many of them were fishermen unlearned people but the fact of the matter is they had power from on high do you believe that we can repeat the same as it was in the book of Acts do you believe we can do the same in our Jerusalem and in our Judea Samaria and to the othermost part of the world and wherever you are it could be a different place you could be in Pakistan or the continents of Africa or even in the Middle East but wherever you are I want you to lift up the nation and pray that God would use you and the church you attend 
and to be able to bring forth the revival and fan to, fl fan to flame the fire of the Holy Spirit by praying and seeking the Lord in worship and prayer. We're going to pray for a revival in our own city, in our own Judea, Samaria, and to the othermost part of the world. But those of you who have a burden, God has put a burden in your heart for a particular nation that has been the most difficult nation. It could be your own nation. It could be a nation that is God is putting in your heart. I want you to take a step out and just walk. You don't have to be close to each other, but just take a step out and go ahead and lift up that nation to the Father in prayer. Speak loud and say, Lord, revive my brother there in the Philippines to that or maybe in uh, the Caribbean countries, whether it be Trinidad or Ghana, or in the Spanish-speaking countries, if you're going to stand in the gap, and again, pray for our own city. We're going to pray right now, and we're going to have one more prayer before the choir comes back. Let's join together. If God is putting in your heart a nation, if God is putting in your heart a burden, go ahead and come and lift that nation to the Father. Revive, oh, revive, oh, revive. Go ahead, people of God, join in one accord. I'm not the praying, but you are joining in that prayer. Go ahead. And those of you, God, lift up your voice. They lifted up their voice in one accord, and God heard them and sent a mighty revival. Hear our prayer this evening, Lord, even as we lift up the nations of the world, but we begin in our own Jerusalem, in our own city, in our own suburbs, in our own borough, in our own out areas, O oh God, in our city and the cities across the tri-state. We want to pray for these nations today. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Hear our prayer as we bring nations. People are lifting up nations to you today. People are lifting up, and those that are watching, lift up the nations that God has put in your heart and pray, God, have mercy, have mercy and mercy. Oh, God, let your Holy Spirit save so many souls. Revive churches. Hear our prayer as we bring. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the prayers that are going out, oh God, for the nations and the cities and, oh God, to the uttermost parts of the world. We agree together in one accord as so many people are praying here, Lord, for the nations and nations and nations and cities and cities and our own Jerusalem, the Jerusalem that you come from. Go ahead, lift up and say this prayer. Lord, hear our prayers for our nation, for our city. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We lift up these nations and cities. And, oh, God, to the uttermost part of the world, use us, oh, God, as in the book of Acts, chapter 2, as in the book of Acts, chapter 4, as in the book of Acts, chapter 16. Hear our prayer, oh, God, and let Acts be repeated again and again by your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Go ahead, give the Lord a clap offering. <laughs> During the time of COVID... I can tell you that so many people have lost loved ones, but they are with the Lord. But it doesn't mean we lose our life and brood and think back with sorrow. They have won the race, they are with the Lord, but all we can say is for the many who did not know the Lord, our prayers and praying that, that their loved ones would not go the same way. It could happen any time, any day, not just COVID. But I want you to understand there are very many people here and all across the world, that COVID has take, like a raptured everything around them, punctured the tires of their lives, things that they own, things that they have. They basically, I know young people that have gone into a mental situation. There are people who are in a state of divorce. There are people who are losing their mind. People have lost their money. People have lost their income. People are afraid, even looking to what, would await the future. They're so afraid. And that apart, our own nation and the nations across the world are in a whirlpool, just like a cyclone, not knowing what would happen. It's all being cloaked downwards. But you know what? If my people, which are called by my name, the Bible says, if we could join together. But I'm going to pray not only for revival, but I'm going to pray and ask you to join with me in praying for a total restoration. Restoration is bringing back what was once lost. 
And you heard the story of our Lord Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 15, where he restored the coin, the sheep, and the lost son. Maybe you lost your, not simply a coin, a whole fortune. Not just simply a land, your job in that country. It was basically taking care of sheep was a job. It could be your bank. It could be your work. It could be whatever you are. And maybe the lost son. It could be a son. It could be a daughter. It could be a father. It could be a mother. We're going to pray for restoration. Are you ready to pray for restoration? I'm going to say a passage from the scriptures because we must base it on the scriptures. And here in we find in Joel chapter 2 and verse 25, the Lord God's promising, I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm has eaten, the, can, the caterpillar was eaten, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And I want you to know this, that we're going to see a restoration. The years of what we have lost, do you believe that God can restore? Do you believe God can restore? Maybe you are that person who lost something very precious. You have lost a home, you have lost your money, you have lost your stock, you have lost whatever possession or loved ones, or you are in the process of losing someone. No matter what it is, maybe you are aware of someone very close to you that called you and shared their heart. It's not simply for you to know it. It's for you to cry out to God. And you need to cry out for restoration. You need to pray, Lord, what they have lost may be restored. And God is impressing on your heart to stand in the gap for someone. And in this prayer of restoration, I'm going to ask that you come right here and stand and meet uh, meet the Lord and say, Lord, I want you to restore Jane. I want you to restore Tom. I want you to restore, oh God, this man who has lost himself. Can you believe God? Because if he can restore the years that the canker worms and the locust and all of this have eaten, God can do it again. God can do. Jesus talked about that lost sheep and the lost coin and the lost son. He can do it again. Can you say, my God? He can do it again. Let us pray the prayer of restoration. And I want you to stand in the gap. Just walk down. Don't feel just if you're walking around, if you just want to lay before the Lord, just feel free. Whether you are in the house, if you're in the car, just keep your mind eyes on the road and keep uh, your heart in prayer. But we're going to bring needs. There are very many people this Wednesday. God has drawn them to this body today. And there are so many that are lifting up needs. And we're going to lift up needs to the Father today. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Go ahead, lift up your voice. I'm not the one praying. You are. Everyone lifting up their voice. Everyone lifting up their needs. Let God hear you. Let God hear your voice. This is not a one-man prayer. It is you. All I'm doing is encouraging you to pray. All I'm doing is encouraging Go ahead, lift up your voice, lift up your voice. What is it you're praying for recovery? What is it what you're praying for restoration? Lift up that need. It could be your health, it could be your son, it could be your daughter, it could be someone that has desperately needed something and that's lost. Someone in the very midst, in the hedge of losing sanity. I want you to pray this. Lord, we lift up precious people to you. We lift up, oh God, cities and nations and businesses. We lift up work and we lift up our people's personal businesses and their own savings and the stocks that they have lost. Many, oh God, have no future, but you can turn it again. You can turn it around again. And we pray this. Here are the names of people. Here are the conditions, here are situations we bring that you would restore in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, Abba, Father, God Almighty, hear our prayer as we bring these needs to you today. Hear the prayers of your people, hear the prayers of those that are crying out to you, O oh God, even online as they're watching. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is going to remind you of someone that cried out, called you up, and you've forgotten. Go ahead. Lift up that person. God is reminding you of a particular situation in your life. Go ahead and pray that God would restore. And hear our prayer, God, because you said, I will restore, I will restore, I will restore. And we hear the story of the coin being restored. The, the job of taking care of that one sheep meant so much restored. And that one son, oh God, has been restored. All the glory and the honor, we believe you can do it. And you have done it. We pray this 
in the name of Jesus. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, because you are great, you are mighty, and you can do it again and again and again. Can you say amen? God is so good that we can give him the praise. We can give him the thanks. Oh, we believe in revival. Revival not in a speaker coming in and going back with revival. We believe the Holy Spirit can revive every dead situation, including lives and churches. And we can believe it again and again. The choir is going to come back again. And they're going to sing that song you know by heart, of course. Revive us. Again, we praise Thee, O God, and says, revive us, revive us, revive us. Oh, we need that revival. We need that revival. And as we sing this song, it's in the background there. You can join in, and those that are watching, make this song your song. Revive us, O God. Revive us, because Psalm 86 and verse 5, will thou not revive us again? You will. And you can, Lord, even as we come to you in prayer. I cannot tell you one of the greatest revival, personal revival, is when we begin to sing and pray in the Spirit. And when I say that, for those who know what the Holy Spirit does is reviving you as you speak and sing in an unknown tongue, it revives you personally. And there's the work of the Holy Spirit groaning in your heart. Uh, don't leave quiet, just one more. We're just going to sing this chorus again. When they are singing, I want you to go ahead and pray in tongues. Pray in the Spirit. Sing in the Spirit. Don't be afraid. We're not entertaining anybody. We're just going to the Lord. Let me tell you how desperate the situation is. I can tell you across the world, I can tell you people I know, they tell me about the numbers of leaders that have been struck down. I can tell you the number of people across the world, ministry leaders, pastors, 
that have been struck down with sickness, have been struck down with COVID, with cancer. In our midst are many people who have come out of that. God has revived them. God has saved them. As I speak, there are ministry leaders here in Highland Church that have been stricken so badly. The enemy, this liar, wants to destroy his people and the only way can chase him out is by one accord in prayer. Can you say one accord? That we need to bind the powers of darkness and lose God's healing, God lose God's blessings. Are we agreed together that leaders, ministry leaders, pastors, teachers, and God's people would be healed would be delivered do you believe that we can join together yeah this is something we can join together now i want you to also pray and also be revived don't wait for me go ahead and speak you haven't spoken in tongues for a long time nobody is going to say boo about it it's a personal time of prayer yes it is but this is a time of prayer we are going to go ahead sing precious people of god while they're singing we are going to go forth in praying and pray with understanding as you know the names of people and you know people that in this body or maybe someone outside that the enemy has snuffed out and others that are going through this, this terrible excruciating pain or whatever it is i want to stand against it and i want you to stand for precious people that they would be set free as they are singing, let's go to the Father as we speak and as we sing and as we take these uh, prayers to the Lord in the Spirit. Go ahead. Oh, revive us, revive us. So It is for God's glory when you are revived when you go back into your life into ministry and your call and back to where God has placed you and to be occupied in the call that God has placed upon whether it be in the natural or in the spiritual while the choir is still standing I just want to pray for one more need listen to what it says here in um, in uh, Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5 but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. I want you to stand in the gap for those that are spiritually hurt. And they are pained and they are just uh, totally estranged from God the Father because of whatever they're blaming God. For those that are going through abuse, those that are hurt in their own soul and those that have been wrecked in their own mind 
And you know someone, I want you to come right here and pray for precious people. Stand where God calls you and lift up in the altar of God and say, Lord, here are these precious people. There are people that have gone through so much situation and they need to be healed. I believe that he was wounded for our transgression, that is our sin and iniquities, and that is he was brutal for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace to do with our peace in the soul. That is also, and by his stripes we are healed. We're going to claim this promise and stand in the gap for precious ones. You know someone's name. You know someone who's going through that situation. Go ahead and lift up that need to the Father today. And we're going to sing this song from Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. Surely he bore our sorrow. By his stripes you are healed. While they're singing this song, go ahead and lift up those names. It could be mental, it could be spiritual, it could be physical, it could be wholesome healing. Go ahead and bring that need. As they're singing this song, he was wounded. It's scriptural, it's from the Bible. We're going to appropriate that for families and loved ones. Go ahead, let's sing that song. But you pray at this point. They're going to sing, but you're going to pray. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Hear our prayer. Hear the prayers of your people, precious ones that are watching. Go ahead. Lift up that dear ones in prayer. Go ahead, choir. Go ahead, Pastor Val. We're going to bring these needs to the Father today. He was wounded. a one accordness if two of us agree together as touching it, anything it shall be done of the Father if we bind together and there are situations that we can come to bind this COVID we want no more of this COVID we're just praying that God would reach out and take it away and blow it into the sea and this monkeypox would not affect anybody that it would not be another pain for people today across the land people have had enough and we just want to stand in the gap and say Lord come to the aid of your people chase away everything that is hurting people killing people destroying homes destroying businesses and we want to pray right now go ahead stand in the gap and pray even as we come to the Father Father take away all of this viruses and this, oh God, monkeypox and whatever would come our way, save your people. Lord, across the world, from the continents of Africa and Australia, the Middle East and the West and every place, oh God, deliver your people from such terrible, oh, uh, sentence of Satan upon your people and upon across the world, just people in general. And we bind together in Jesus' name everything that comes against people. 
and we lose the healing. We lose the healing. And we pray, God, the balm of Gilead, that, Lord, you would reach out and thank you for doctors and hospitals and nurses and so many people that are doing human work, oh God, help them. But also, Lord, let the spiritual healing be released right now in the power and in the mighty name of Yeshua Masi, our Lord. While we're doing this, I want us to pray for the church, not only this local church, but the church across the world. I want you to particularly pray the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 5, so we being many are one body and every one member one of another. Difference in our gift, difference in our being, and yet we are one together and we need to pray. I want you to lift up precious ones to God in prayer. Maybe it's different where you are, what you're watching, but I'm just going to pray right here, and as I bring those needs, I want you to say, Lord, reach out and touch lives today. We need desperately volunteers and helps ministry, security. Can you say, Lord, bring those precious people? I'm praying for people, more people into the intercessory ministry, that they would stand as watchmen over the walls of our city and the cities of the world. Can you say, Lord, increase the volunteers, and increase, oh God, intercessors and uh, in our uh, church and churches. I'm going to pray, increase evangelism ministry, that they would go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for these ministry leaders and for Marie Santiago and for precious ones. Increase the deliverance ministry leaders and Father for uh, Sister Heisen Campbell and also Lord God for those that are joining with her and for uh, Minister Sylvia Hemenes. Lord, we just lift up precious people. I want to lift up the youth, every aspect of the youth service. Go ahead, say, Lord, increase our youth. Increase our youth. And may there be a large company of people. I want to lift up precious people that we need today in many ministries, whether it be worshipers or dancers, the youth choir. We just want to pray gifted people with love for God and willing and able and available that would come and bless the church. Can you say, Lord, bring gifted people that we need desperately to fill the many gaps in the church. Go ahead. I want you to ask the Lord to pray for the media team that their tribe would increase. Can you say that? People with computer knowledge, specialists in internet and audio, that they would join the media team. Lord, can you say, increase the media team. I want you to pray for the very many people in this many ministries that they would begin to exercise their ministry and their gifts. I want to also pray for multicultural services that we would be reaching as many people in this community, particularly here in our location. It is Spanish and it is also Bangladesh. The, the we need to reach out to large numbers of people. Maybe it's a little different there. Just say, Lord, bring people and give us good leaders. I want you to pray particularly that we would be uh, witnesses here and that as people of God, we would be one. I'm going to say this. As we sing this song, we are one in the Spirit, one in the Lord. At this moment, the, the uh, precious people will be preparing to receive the offering and you could basically sing this song and bring those needs to the Father even as we continue to praise God. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful time in God's presence. Amen. At this time, we would like to take a moment as a small token of our gratitude to our Lord and Savior. We would like to Offer up our tithes and our offerings. If you're watching tonight, there are several ways you can support the ministry of Highland Church. You can mail your donation to the church office at 160-20 Highland Avenue, Jamaica, New York, 11432. If you're watching on Facebook, click the Learn More button. If you're on YouTube, click the About button. And if you're on our website, click the Give button. You may text to give by texting Highland Giving at any amount to 73256. Highland giving in any amount to 73256. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for this wonderful time that we are experiencing in your presence tonight as a family. As we pray, as we seek your face, oh God, we pray, God, that you would be glorified in our lives, oh God. We ask you, Lord, to bless 
every gift and every giver, Father, and that these offerings would be multiplied for the good and the purpose of your kingdom, that every need would be supplied according to your riches and glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. What an opportunity it is that we can lift up our hands and bless the Lord. Go ahead, lift up your hands and say, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. And now as you stretch your hands around you, say peace on the city, blessing on the city, grace upon the city and upon the churches. Can you reach out and say, Lord, help our government help the leaders and help particularly leaders in the church bless them bless them i'm going to say this we are in right in the precipice of a great mighty outpouring i want you to pray i want you to pray for the city and those of you there pray for your city and i want us not to miss this the great visitation all oh, the people in Jesus' days missed it. The day of visitation. And once we miss it, what would be the greatest blessing turns out to be a tragedy. A nation, a city would be destroyed. Before Pastor Hans comes to dismiss us in prayer, may this be our prayer today. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. What is your humble cry? It's a burning, burning cry. Maybe I've not addressed that, but you know it. 
just come as the choir is singing before we close in prayer. Just lay this request at the feet of the Lord Jesus. Go back. The Lord knows your heart. The Lord knows your desire, your longing. And this is the moment that you come before we close. And may this be, Lord, pass me not, O gentle Savior. of your people this evening, O oh Lord. We gathered by your grace and that was your call, O oh God, upon the heart of our pastor, Father. We thank you, God, that we were able to participate in this by your grace, O oh Lord. Bless your people, O oh Father, wherever they may be. 
right here in this sanctuary or over the internet or whatever time they would be watching this, oh Lord God, may your blessings fall upon them. Reveal yourself to them, oh God, in a mighty way. Reveal yourself, Father, to those who do not yet know Christ as Lord and Savior. Do not pass them by, oh Lord. We thank you, you did not pass us by, Lord. Do not pass them by, Father. Bless them, O oh God. Bless your people, O oh Father. And even as we depart from this place, O oh Father, we thank you that we are able to do so with your presence, for we are the temple of your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord. And Lord God, may we continue, Father, in an attitude of prayer, O oh God, all the days of our lives, Father. And that your name will be glorified, O oh Father. Oh, right here, Lord God, in Jamaica, Queens, in our own Jerusalem, in our own Judea, in our own Samaria, Lord God, and to the utmost part of the world, to you and you alone, be all the praise, honor, and glory to Christ our Lord. And God's people say, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Go with the peace of the Lord.